want the 120, which one do you want to start with, uh, Carolyn? We can do 122. I've got that up. Okay, let's see. Doesn't look like anything came. Didn't work. It's up. It's, no, it's, it's up. up. It, you just make it bigger, perhaps. Oh. Well, I'm not seeing it. Okay. So you have the 122 up? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. I'm working with two screens. Now I can see it now. All set? That's not well. bigger. <laughs> it's just showing your sidebar there. Just showing the sidebar. Yeah. All right. Is that better? No? Yes, this is yeah. better. Yeah. Okay. I have two two screens and two monitors going, so I'm confused as to what's getting picked up on, but okay. That's the place then. Go ahead, Carolyn. All right, I'll start. So the, the first line item is uh, my salary. I will start negotiations next week. So that number may, may change. Um, but there is, if we um, go to the third line down where it has other salaries, that's going to include some uh, part-time assistance that we have now to help out uh, with if, if Jennifer's out or um, we also are getting assistance uh, from Peter doing uh, the minutes for us. So that is included that. It's got some adjustments, adjust, adjustments for um, some additional support to come in to help with answering phones and things like that especially during our busier times, as well as whatever um, may be the result of my negotiations. Uh, Jennifer's position is the licensing and procurement. Uh, I, let me explain the finance manager and the risk manager. This is a part of a phased approach that we're working towards really truly having a, a finance department, um, but it's going to take baby steps. We can't do that at night, but I think you guys know that uh, the board of uh, the select board approved um, uh, adding the position of finance manager to Linda's position. So that is um, that that position has um, was assigned a line item stipend as of FY23, but we moved to 5,000 from the treasurer's salary on um, uh, from the treasurer's salary onto that line item. Did I explain that right, Linda? That's right. That's okay. Right. Okay. And then the risk manager, uh, Sue Glowatsky, at she, her position before she came here was um, municipal insurance and um, brought that expertise to the town. And two years ago, we started, um, she was starting to get reimbursed on a stipend for that. Um, but that has become, she has taken, just dived in completely and is working really close with Maya doing OSHA um, training. She's done two weeks for it for the region. So she's really diving into that and saving a great deal of money for the town. Uh, and a, a select board did um, add that position risk manager to her position right now. So we're keeping them somewhat separate moving forward, understanding that there's a succession plan in the next three years so that um, those responsibilities will have room for to movement to another position or um, as we get closer to that finance department, um, it's, it's really going to be left up to the future town administrator if I'm not here, um, as well as the, the present select board. So we're making movements towards that. Uh, the rest of it, a little bit self-explanatory. Um, we have the interpreter for town meeting. We always like to keep it about a thousand dollars the past couple of years. Uh, we haven't used that fully, but we need to have it by law. We have to have an interpreter, uh, the town reports that Jennifer loves to do. That's for the printing, um, tuition and median dues. If you go down to the last, uh, item, the dues, the last line item, we zeroed that out and just com combined it. So that's why, um, that's at 5,000. Uh, board docs, the website, office supplies and other expenses. Um, the channel markers, there we're still, that's a little bit unknown right now. We uh, worked in almost in a regional agreement with uh, Northampton to provide those channel markers, but we got a very, very high estimate. So the Northampton's still working on that, uh, trying to get that estimate down, but we don't know what that is right now. And PV Pioneer Valley Planning Committee, that's uh, smart growth, that's assistance that we use from them. And mileage and meals, 
And like I said, the dues, um, we just combined with the other one. Do you have any questions about any of that? I'm just curious why your um, salary dropped from 21 to 22. Was that left over from David? They overlapped. Okay. We over oh, that's right. Yeah, we overlapped. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Linda. And a, a quick question on the finance manager and risk manager. There, um, kind of, if the there is a succession plan, and this might grow to either to somebody else or, um, um, you know, even another, um, it might go to somebody else. Is there an allocation of hours that people are estimating how much time they spend doing these tasks, and and is that reflected in, um, I guess you know when you look at the stipend increase, if that was to move to somebody else, would that stipe, same amount be appropriate? You go, go ahead, Linda. Uh, okay. Uh, we don't really uh, expect any direct replacement on either of us. So, which is why it's sitting in the uh, select board budget as opposed to in the treasurer or the collector um, salary. So that's not payment for a certain number of hours at a certain rate. What that is, is a stipend on top of our regular uh, pay, which is for 37 and a half hours, uh, 37 and a half hours for the increased responsibility um, of handling those and um, and to uh, in order to allow that to happen, we have had a uh, an increase in support hours after the last couple of years. So that, um, for example, I don't print the checks anymore. I have an assistant who prints the checks. That allows me to put more time into things such as doing this budget or the capital planning or various other financial things that come along, which are many, which are many more than there used to be. We, we're just seeing a huge increase of what's coming in um, into the town administrator's office. And so we're looking ahead. Um, I think there's recognition all around, and certainly, um, if you uh, certainly with if you heard any of the select board meetings where they were uh, talking with, I think these were open meetings, wasn't it, Carol? This was not. These were open meetings where, uh, with the evaluations of yes, the um, tremendous workload that is happening there, and it certainly cannot be a single one person's job. So yes, we're building those towards. That will be what the maybe the second in command there, part-time, full-time or whatever. We're not envisioning it as being either of us individually because this is a bit down the road. Um, and also going back to the treasurer and the collector budget, you can't expect the next treasurer to come in and, and put together the budget. And you can't expect the next collector to come in and being told uh, to uh, to handle the ins insurance issues that come up. So mm -hmm. we're, we're, well, but what we're going to do with those two offices in the future, that's still this is still uh, something that we're we're working towards. What is the best way to create a financial department, and what's the best way uh, to run the town administrator's office? And when we say best, we want to get all these, we want to get all, everything, all the work covered, um, and we're trying to do it uh, financially efficiently as well. So not just add positions, but to find a way if we can uh, re reorganize some of these so we have a, a, a better working system. So the question, the, I'm just looking at the big, the, mm -hmm. the biggest increase, which is other salaries. Explain that again. So, cause I'm so just looking at, I'm just looking at what the actuals were historically and doesn't look like it's ever really gone past Looks like eight thousand is the highest, and we're allocating now thirty-seven thousand. So I'm just, and even the actuals are very small. So I'm just trying to understand why are we increase ha having such a large number allocated for that? So it is a, it is a, adding additional some additional hours or or a possible um, part time part time position to help more with um, some of the basic tasks that can relieve Jennifer and I of answering phone calls and dealing with front front end uh, interruptions. Um, but honestly, it is there is a basically an amount that's put in there um, with not knowing the, the results of the negotiations for my contract. So, so also so the results of the uh, compensation study that's coming up, there might have to be some adjustments. Yes, thank you, I forgot about that, yeah. yes. So it's really just a, it's not really additional What's the word? Because let's say if 
something the ad, admin sal salary if you're go going to other salaries if let's say something happens negatively with your negotiation or whatever uh, isn't that going to go and adjust to 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 what those other salaries will be if there's that position is unfilled or or not can, like I, i'm just trying to understand it's it's not really doesn't look it, it's there to supplement something else if something else doesn't go the way I, I, or are you adding more people to to that or are you looking to add more headcount to 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 the town administration so that hasn't been authorized by the select board but as we look ahead that may be that could be a possibility. We're still trying to figure out, like as as Linda mentioned during my review and um, my 360 review, it was very apparent that I needed some help. And we're still really, I want we everything that we're doing, we're doing in, in somewhat of a small of a phased approach. And so we're trying to be really um, responsible in how we look at what additional support may be helpful for me. Um, but as well as it, Linda did mention that we are doing a compensation study that hasn't been done. And we've had one three or four years ago, it was never implemented. And we have a un two unions starting. So we need to have a baseline for that. So we're having a compensation study that's going to, there, there's going to be some adjustments there. Adjustments there. We don't know, but I, I would suspect there are going to be positions that will have uh, higher rates of pay. So that's also a cushion for that. Okay, so it's more of a it's more of a cushion number than anything else. Uh, yes, th thank you. That's the right word. So it's it's okay. Uh, it, it, it's just you know looking at it in terms of what the actuals were and what the no, it, you're right. It's it's a it's a lot. You, you're asking for more mm -hmm. than you know, really, um, you know, that 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 amount that it's really increasing is pretty significant, and then we're adding. Some of these other things. So that that's just the that's that's my question is that is understanding um, what that's going to be used for. So. Well, the the stipends used to exist, and Linda's stipend was removed two years ago, and then Susan's was just removed this year. So the stipends look like they went down, but it's just that they've been reallocated. So the stipends aren't gone. It's just they were reallocated. The money was already in the budget. They've just addressed the title correctly now. Instead of saying stipends, now it's going to be Linda's salary. Now it's going to be Susan's salary. Okay. But in general, it's it, the, the budget is going up by 10%, a little more than 10%. Based, based on the the fact that it could be the result of the compensation study and and, mm -hmm. and the fact that there could be additional uh, additional help needed just to deal with everything that's going on which uh, again for me I'm just trying to uh, just want to make sure for my understanding what those what those uses are going to be mm -hmm. Susan's got her hand up I, David I don't know how you, you can see yep sure. Okay. I just wanted to point out um, that the 8200 for risk manager, that will start in July 1 of 2024. However, this year I was paid 3000 for doing essentially the same thing. So there's the, the increase is, is a net of 5200. And that's the stipend that's removed, zeroed out. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And I would also want to add in here that uh, in the past year, we've had three, well, two and one upcoming uh, us out for three weeks at a time or more mm -hmm. uh, for medical issues and how thinly staffed we are in town hall. And when someone is out, we just can't afford not to have the position covered. It's one thing to take a one week vacation or be out, but to have a uh, your three to six week medical leave um, and, you know, there's not that many of us on the second floor. So to, to be coming up on our third absence, um, we really uh, kind of highlighted to us how we're not really prepared to shift around uh, work around and have it covered. So we need to be able to um, 
to pay for extra help when people are out. We just have to. And it's it's we all have tiny departments there. And unlike the larger departments in town where you just shift your workers around, that's not the way town hall operates. Sometimes you have to get someone in to actually cover someone's job for a while. And that's that's been true for us in the past year. Is, Going back is, to the is is that accommodated in the uh, in the other salaries bucket? The fifty-one twenty is that part of what that's in, intended for? That's part of what it has been over. used for. That is part of what it has been used for, um, and we don't know what's coming up for FY twenty-four, but that's where it would come from. And going back to that risk manager, the increase of fifty-two hundred is that. What was that increase based off of? If I can speak, um, <laughs> Parmar, uh, when I looked at the number of hours that I spend a week yep. working on just the insurance, uh, it was less than minimum wage. <laughs> so I bumped it to where my salary, uh, where my hourly wage is now. Got it. Okay. That, that makes sense. That's and, and that, that difference moved over from a stipend account um, into, into this uh, line item? Yeah, when Carolyn and I uh, initially spoke uh, for last year's budget, she said, would you be okay to start? Uh, she, she asked me how many hours I spent a week. And I said, I don't know, I don't keep track of it. And um, she said, would you be willing to start at $3,000? And, yeah, and I said, sure. And, um, and it turns out that it's it's a lot more time than than I guess you you, <laughs> you realize once you're keeping track of it. So, um, that's well, just, yeah. Thank you for taking up uh, taking on that duty and helping the town out. I'm I'm uh, you know it certainly is a savings to not have to bring in um, somebody else and add it to somebody's responsibilities. Just looking at it, you know, if there was some that was some of your of the stipend line item that was uh, being used to compensate it. Was that, um, is that account, is that line item not showing up in this budget anymore? Is um, It's right that, below it, yeah. 5195. So the yeah. three, okay, there it is, duh. I, it's coming right out of it. So that was the three, that was the $3,000 moved right up there, okay. Yeah, correct. We're at, we're at about three, we're about our third year of this experimental work with a stipend. And what Susan and I both ran up against is, yeah, well, we'll do that. Good. That's nice to get extra pay, but it turns out a stipend doesn't go into your, uh, isn't really salary, so it's not counted towards your retirement. And and I hope to retire at some point. <laughs> God, please. <laughs> which is which is why we're doing this succession planning, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so we're hoping to set this up so that these jobs can be ta tasked onto other people who will, and, and maybe just a single other person in the administrator's office who will be able to take care of them. What I, uh, what I have kind of described them as, uh, because we don't know exactly where all the emphasis would be, is we take these uh, closed door projects, these projects where you need to close the door and sit for five, four or six hours, and we just, um, the town administrator is just almost never able to do that. And um, so eventually you need someone to be able to sit down and do that, such as put the butch together. I mean, that's that's a lot of quiet time sitting down just focusing on this. And it's not something that you can fit in between meetings and interruptions and phone calls and people stopping in and what other crisis might be hitting the, the town that day. So I think this is, we're really trying to do some longer range planning here and make sure that we all, uh, that we all leave these jobs able to uh, be picked up by some, in another reasonable manner by our, our future staff. Quite honestly, what I see uh, uh, trending in, in in towns is you have an assistant town administrator, or assistant town manager, um, and they handle the insurance and the budget, mm -hmm. uh, amongst amongst other things. Uh, and that way, the town administrator can handle, uh, you know, the the. Fa uh, um, Everything else facing. Everything. <laughs> Let me get it that, that right. <laughs> better so. known, better known as a fire hose all day. <laughs> that would be correct. Sorry. <laughs> Any other questions? 
No, oh, thank you. And Amy is in the room. Hey, Amy. Now what? Next. <laughs> Next item. Oh, is, are, you're, you're all set? I didn't know if Amy had anything. Okay, so oh, we're all set. I don't have anything, sorry. <laughs> I I, listen, I was listening the whole time. I, I My face wasn't oh. showing, but I, I, I listened to the whole thing. <laughs> she, she, all right. was smiling. she was smiling. All was right. Smiling. Uh oh. I pulled up the wrong, uh oh, I don't have the 190 here. Mm -mm. Um, I opened something twice. Okay. Um, Page 30. Budget book. Okay, I'm going to use the, uh, all right. So I have to stop sharing what I was doing and I have to hop over to the budget book because I pulled up the wrong thing. Okay. Budget book. All right. Are you seeing the budget book? Not yet. How about now? Yes. All right. Lovely cover. All right. What, uh, <laughs> page, what page, page, Paul? 30, 32. Well, it's 33. actually 33. The actual budgets are on 33. Okay. There we go. Uh, yeah, this is another one of those. It's a tall budget. Yes. So I don't know how much. So if you ever need me to move down or whatever, I don't know if you're seeing everything that I'm seeing. So uh, could you, could you zoom in a little? Things. Yeah. Pardon me. Zoom in. Uh, zoom in uh, uh, and expand that screen. Are you are you able to open this in a PDF viewer or is this a? Because this is looks like it's open in a browser. Is it not working? Are you seeing it now? It's getting there. Yeah. Oh, it's getting there. Still need more. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's good. It's, All right it's now. Awesome. Widen your widen your screen. Yeah. Okay. Maximize. I I really don't right. understand why I'm not seeing what you're seeing, but at least in the way you're seeing it. How about that? A little bit we further can, to the right. A little bit more. We can just about see the right hand column. Better. Uh, yes, that's, that's good. Yep. Okay. Otherwise, we'd have no change. Right. Okay. Jennifer, 190s. 190s. The, the 190s are the building and operation budgets. Um, I went through these. The, these are the really, you know, sort of like with the, the fuel for the DPW, this is one of those budgets that's sort of hard to predict because as we were starting the budget prep for this and I was working on this budget, everything I was seeing trying to forecast what the utilities would be, we're saying 15 to 20% increases in electricity and in gas. And so um, I put in substantial increases. I actually did, um, I can't remember if this is the 15% or the 20% number, but I did both for what I requested and then worked with Karen and Linda to come down to select a number. But then further discussions, um, it was decided it would be best to um, actually not inflate those budgets for a just in case the um, the you know the rates did increase. But it was better to leave that money in a reserve fund, and then if needed, we would be able to do a reserve fund transfer if the utilities did spike. Um, so that is the choice that uh, was made here. Um, to keep it as modest as possible. And then um, there's a few other things. Um, postage is what I wanna draw your attention to. Uh, some years we've gone over, some years we've gone under. We kept it at 24,000, but uh, the postage, uh, they announced that they're going to be raising postage two times a year from now on, on July 1st and January 1st. So that's another budget line that we're hoping is adequate. 
but it's something to keep an eye on. And off, a lot of it depends on um, the mailings from the collector's office. Um, so, cause she just, they do such a large quantity with all of their invoices. So, um, and I am just jumping around a little bit because there's not a whole lot of changes here, um, but it, it, I will go back up into the senior center and point out that the office equipment maintenance line, we have zeroed that out and combined it down into the town hall one um, to, to combine those lines. And so we did zero that out. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how to do this where I can see. Okay. Um, okay. So we did zero that out and added it in to the town hall one. Um, and then after that, going down, Susan handled the, the does the town property insurance. The mm -hmm. next one is town hall, which is the 196 lines. Um, again, if you look, we did do a, a substantial um, decrease in the town hall equipment maintenance line. The reason why that's so high is because um, of uh, warranties on the server that I will be doing with Northeast IT soon. And then it's a one-time expense for three years. And we were able to extend the warranties. We didn't think we were gonna be able to, so we extended the warranties. And um, after that's done, that's three years. So we dropped back down to $2,000 to um, save some expenses there. Um, the other one I would like to point out is the copier leases. Um, we are in the middle of working on a project um, and, and, and by in the middle, I mean, um, we're about to pull the trigger on the, uh, leasing of town hall copier leases. This was a project of Carolyn's that she was, um, very interested in bringing to the town and that there would be cost savings there to the town. And so we've got the research, we have a proposal and, um, we're just uh, tightening up the final numbers, but we'll be moving over about $4,800. This is, and by the reason why this is not in here is because this is literally um, in hand today, kind of, uh, we've just gotten the proposals in, but we'll be moving money over to this line from other budgets, but um, you'll see an overall sort of decrease, if you will, of about $5,000 in toner and copier charges for the year uh, across the town. Um, and we'll be paying right under $400 a month for uh, toners, parts, labor, and machine rentals um, with unlimited copies uh, for, for the town. Uh, the police are already on this. The COA is already on this program. So it's something that is going to bring a cost savings and efficiencies to the town because toner cartridges are so very expensive. Um, we were spending about $9,000 a year um, on toner cartridges, and now we'll spend $4,800 roughly. So $5,000. So and, and not buying the equipment anymore. And not buying the equipment anymore because they will either come fix it or replace it. Whereas now if a machine breaks, we recycle it because nobody, nobody repairs them anymore. They're basically a disposable item. As soon as they break, you have to buy another one. So this is going to be a, a major cost savings to the town. And um, there'll be little adjustments to other departments' budgets as they go through based off the numbers they provided. Um. So the copier lease, that's copier lease and um, the postage machine, which we still have time on both of those and we'll be finishing those up. So they're, they're sort of a stagnant other than the increase. Um, then the next is tech services with the Northeast IT. We, we're, they we're still in the middle of, I believe this is our second year. We'll have one more year with them um, of the unlimited support at 45,000 a year. Um, for my benefit, it's worked out really well. And I think the other town had, the rest of the towns enjoyed it, but that's, you know, we have two more years of $45,000. Um, telephones are another place where we are looking to do, um, some, I'm sorry, does anybody have questions? No. Okay. So, can you go back to the tech services? So is that, yes. is that 22,006, is that the actual or what is that? Number. That's where we are as of, I believe it was February 2nd, Linda. Since I had to go back to the budget book, it was, uh, it was December 31. 
The so sheet I have Jennifer shows uh, through February. Um, oh, that's half the year, Shardul. Okay. I mean, that's a that's that's a contractual, multi-year contractual obligation. Yes, and and we as a town with procurement, we have a right to extend the contract for up to two additional years after this, um, which um, is something that we'll probably explore as we get closer. Um, the only thing I'll say about the copier lease is that it makes a tremendous amount of sense. We should just make ensure that if we determine that there are copiers that are underutilized or un are not needed, we should make sure that we have good termination clauses so that we're not on the hook for those leases um, for them. Because they, just, just from my experience, that usually you can't get out of those leases. Right, so I will say, uh, Shardul, um, we have a really great program that we, we have found through a vendor um, and it's $17 a month for the basic machine and it's $39 a month for the fancy machine. Um, so we, we have done that and, and we'll go over the lease um, as we when we sign the paperwork, but um, I, we've already done a survey of the machines and town hall and si and DPW and the COA and the library and Goodwin. And we've sized everybody appropriately to come up with the number that we have. So mm -hmm. we've already, we've already done it based on their use. Okay. Um, just, yeah, I, I'm not saying you haven't, I'm just saying just make sure that if anything changes in the future, that mm -hmm. you do have that flexibility. So you're not on the hook for a machine that's not being used. That's all. That's all I'm, Okay. This, that, that's all I'm saying. It's okay. just it's just something that we ran into. We did we kind of did the same thing, and then we found out we're not we didn't need something after because you know some staffing changes or whatever, and then you're stuck with that machine with that sit, kind of sitting there unused. Right. Um, so that's um, that that is the copier leases. There are a couple of machines that we're going to keep on hand. Um, just because of usage, but, but overall, this is going to be, we think the best fit for the town. And like I said, you know, a, a, a cost savings, um, and then telephone and internet. Um, I'm actually going to come to y'all probably at your meeting on the 13th, asking for a reserve fund transfer, um, because we are working on a phone system with the police department and, um, it's a new system, but the current phones that we have are very expensive to replace. The service is very expensive and they're not quality phones at all. Um, but when the town hall phone system crashed uh, right at the beginning of COVID, we the vendor that we used was able to get them into the building and installed and we were ha able to have some remote access. So they have serviced us well, but... Um, now we're just running into so many problems. We're looking at switching to a different program, continuing the interconnectivity with the town hall and the other five buildings where we all can communicate with each other internally. So I will be coming to y'all with a reserve fund transfer. And um, I'm actually meeting with uh, Megan Cahill tomorrow to review the price proposal they gave us, but we're hoping that we'll be able to reflect some additional cost savings there after the initial outlay of installing the new system. Um, we're hoping that we'll be able to bring some cost savings to the town, which again will be re reflected in the town hall, uh, telephone internet budget, but also in the police and fires uh, phone budgets as well. Um, it's just, you know, as you move through these processes with procurement, things don't move always how you want them to. So um, that's why I don't have the numbers for y'all this evening, but that that's gonna be a change, but it's gonna be a good change. And I've taught y'all about postage, town hall equipment supplies. Um, that's can you, the same. Can you go, go back to, can you go back to postage? Cause it's a big number, but we've, we've gone through more than half the year and we've used maybe a third of it. So what, why is it still well, such a large item in the budget? Because there are still, oh goodness, Susan, how many mailings do you have left this year? Um, actually, as of 1231, 
Um, we have third quarter real estate, um, third quarter water, excise, which is huge, uh, fourth quarter real estate and fourth quarter water. So uh, it, from January to June, we have a lot of mailings. Um, so that's why Chardoul. Because we do, at Chardoul, we do our preliminaries uh, mm -hmm. together, um, our preliminary real estate bills together. And then we have uh, first and second quarter of water in the first half of the year. But then everything else is separate. So and and plus excise, um, and you know we we do uh, probably sixty seven hundred excise bills. So it's it, it's back end loaded, unfortunately. Yeah, I, I and, get it. And thirteen thousand Jennifer has been spent through um, February on your other sheet. Again, remember this is just the halfway through the year. Right. So thirteen thousand is spent. There's twenty four thousand left. And um, we, while, while the collector's office is definitely the largest user, um, every time we do a mailing that requires return receipts and stuff, it's a easily $150 a go. And it, so it adds up really quickly, Shardul, and you just, it's one of those numbers that sort of needs to be there because you don't know what's sort of coming your way. And some years we're lucky and some years we go over. So uh, I... I want to scroll up because I think I'm in control of this, so I can scroll up and tell you the num the year. But you can see, you know, one year it was fifteen thousand FY twenty two. Right. But the year before that, it was twenty one thousand. So it's it's just it's hard. This is another hard one to forecast. But I do think being at twenty four thousand is a safe place, knowing that they're increasing twice a year now. Um, and they don't tell us how much they're increasing, which is very kind of them. Um, so moving onward, um, again with whoop, going, okay. Whoops. Okay. And then, um, town hall equipment and supplies is just the, the sort of flotsam and jetsam of running the building. It's extra keyboards, mice, all of those things sort of fall on this line. Every time we add a new employee who needs whatever that is that lives in this line um and that's just a, a catch-all for all of it and again um some years i've gone over some years i've stayed under it's just you can't you can't forecast you want to hope that everybody's gonna that everybody's gonna stay here and we're not gonna need any new equipment and nobody's mouse is gonna die or nobody's battery backup um oh my goodness battery backup is gonna die but very rarely it happens that way. And so I use it for that, uh, use it for um, computers that need extra RAM, all of those things. And again, I, I know for a fact that number's wrong because I've paid to have uh, extra RAMs put into three computers in the last two months, trying to buy us some time to put the extra RAM in and not buy new computers for cost savings. So that's. That is that. And then is there any other questions for the town hall? Um, I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Um, good one is very basic. I mean, very basic. Uh, heat, gas, water, sewer. That's it. <laughs> um, I folded, we, well, we folded his, uh, his being um, Alex for Hadley Media. We folded his um, telephone and stuff into just the town hall line. So he already lives within there for phone and internet. And so he doesn't have anything reflected here. And again, with public safety, those are the same things. They're, they, um, I will point out, they are on 24-7 in a way that other buildings are not. So that is why their electrical increases are so high. Um, and again, why their heat is a little bit higher than other departments sometimes because they run the building 24 seven, whereas here, you know, I had to turn the heat back on at five. So that's pretty simple. Um, and the fire substation, the same thing. Um, we did find that we do not need to heat that building quite as much because it's not used 24 seven. So there's the decrease there. And um, the new library, the same thing. Um, they do not have a heating line that I do want to point that out. Their electric bill is their heating line. 
that is electricity and heating. So that is everything. Are there any questions about it? All, overall, we did decrease the budget, even though there are, um, or yeah, even though there are some departments that went up or some lines that went up, overall, there is a decrease. No, not much you can really do with electric and gas bills. So it's it's not an exciting budget at all. I wish I had something really fancy to tell you all about, but it is it's, it's not the one nineties are not fancy. I do have a question all the way up top, if we don't mind. That's fine. You could explained it, but I'm a little confused. With the senior center, you mentioned that you took the twenty four um, hundred out. Yes, and you said you put it in the town hall. Yes. But I don't see where it is in the town hall. I don't um, see an increase of 2400 Well, they weren't really using it. We only have it for a specific reason. And so that's where you put it into the equipment maintenance. Equipment maintenance. Yes. yes. This one? Yes. Okay. And that's, that's, that's where we put it. Because we found that some years they didn't use it. Some years they did use it. Um, but I mean, you can see they've used $193. So we're just pulling it in and just doing a little bit more consolidating. Okay. So I thought, I remember one time Jane talking about, and maybe it had to do with something else has changed since because it has to do with um, warranties or something. But she talked about, I guess there's a fire, like a fireplace type of thing or something in there or, or something like that. And then there's the doors. And certain things like the the, the electric doors, don't they right. have? Don't you have to deal with that kind of maintenance? You already did with the four ninety budget. Oh, I'm, that's I'm, in that that's in that budget. Yes, that is buildings. I'm building operations. Those are building. A, that is the building, the inside of the building, and the outside. Okay. Of the building. You know, like I I just do the the utilities. I keep so, the heat and the lights on. So this office equipment would be just the computers you're talking about? Or their phones. If their, phone their phones go down and we have to buy a new phone, if they're okay. um, surge protectors, which I know everybody's like surge protectors, but a backup battery, a battery backup surge protectors, you know, somewhere between 80 and $140. So um, just th it's those kind of things. So, okay. So that makes sense what that is. Now, mm -hmm. because you're talking about that kind of thing. Now, say the public safety had a generator. Would that be on this budget? Anything to do with the generator? They have a generator and no, it is not on this budget. That lives under Mike's budget. And I believe that has to do with emergency management. And that's why that lives with Mike. That's why that. I'm just trying to figure out what goes on build with operations sometimes and what goes on their individuals. Right. Um, literally think of me as uh, the utilities. Yeah that's the best way to do it and okay. then like and then the communication aspects of it on I'm keeping your lights on and you're able to call everybody okay. on equipment that works great I'm all set with questions that, that was it I didn't understand. so what Jennifer and I have been talking about for next year and actually uh, is that uh, because you know this is just voted as a single line the bottom line and it's expense and, and it's the uh, everything in here is interchangeable if needed that rather than do it by building, that we would be doing it, but the categories would be electricity, heat, gas, sewer, water. And we would, we're, to make it a little more exciting, I guess, Jennifer, we, we're going to uh, change the way we're categorizing it. I don't think, I don't know, maybe you have some input on this. We don't think it's as important to keep it by building anymore. If all the bills are coming into one location, because remember, these used to be paid by the departments in the different buildings. So our first step was to bring it all under one budget, and Jennifer's been organizing that. But now we're not really seeing any reason to do it building by building as far as uh, the budget. I don't know. Is. I, 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 I kind of like when I see it building by building only <laughs> because we had new buildings and to see, and, and for instance, like if the, were the, the library's been looking at maybe doing a, um, uh, the, the solar or if the if if the senior center does the solar how much is it going to be what what does that change and sometimes when it's so big and it's such a big thing it's almost like 
the other day when I was talking to the police, well, you have this whole thing on salaries. I can't figure out when you talk about increasing because you have all these other things in there. I don't really understand what one person is. So sometimes this breakdown is kind of nice, especially because we had new buildings. Well, Amy, I do. I will have the breakdown and I do keep a, I do keep a Excel spreadsheet that you would probably love as a banker. It would probably make you so happy. Um, but I do, I do keep an Excel spreadsheet and um, I build it year by year. So it, I actually can, I think I can take you back three years as you just click through and you can see the changes. So that's something that I could provide to the finance committee very easily. And I, and I can just make a note next year that, you know, if we do combine all of these, that that is information that y'all are going to want to see what actual building costs were. Um, so right now, um, for the, for all of these, um, I have to go and find their little line and, you know, match them up with theirs. And, and it, okay. it would just be an easier swipe and make the process a little quicker for me um, to, to streamline the process. But all of the information is always going to be available because right. um, I'm still going to have to track it. And we, okay. and we still need it for other things too, like the greener communities and stuff like that. Like we, we forever need to be able to show the usage in buildings. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I mean, they'll make your life easier. We want to definitely make your life easier. And, and especially if you can track it, you can tell us down the road. It doesn't necessarily have to be this format. You can tell us what it is. I just think that it is, especially when we do new buildings, um, it's yeah. helpful to see where that goes. Absolutely. Right. That was one of the ways I sold Linda um, about combining them all. I was like, I promise I have another tracking method. <laughs> like, I promise. And you'll really like it. It's a very fancy spreadsheet. Um, so it is there. And it's just, you know, it's just one more step for streamlining this process and, and making us more efficient. And, and I yeah. like that. And it gives me a little more time to do something else. So. Makes sense. Are there any other questions for my very boring budget? I think if you can send us um, the other format before you change this, so we can at least take a take a gander of what we're getting. If, if we're gonna if we're gonna go and not do this, then we at least we we I'd like to see what the other format is before we change it. Absolutely. Yeah, I will um, make make a note of that. Available at any time, but I actually we were playing with it, so we have it already. Um, sort of comparisons for our purposes, but they're happy to share it with you as well. If that's it, I'll say thank you all. Um, thank you. Thank you. And end of budgets, David, and all right. me and all of you. So now we're uh, just general discussion at this point, right? Yeah, at some point I can do it now or a little bit later. I, I do have a bit of a recap of the changes since your, since your book based on going through it. And then I also have the, uh, the draft of the, the um, sheet that I sent you all, a worksheet for putting it together. Uh, um, the one that's voted at town meeting. Let me, let me stop sharing here for a moment. Um, before you do that, do you want to go over the changes or recap the changes just from our? Sure, I'll just do it, you know, without any, okay. without any props here. Um, the, uh, we, we talked about with Board of Health that we had, that we had not been budgeting for the mosquito control fee. And that is, or uh, that is $5,000. So we're going to um, need to uh, provide for that $5,000 in their budget. Um, there was a small, uh, there was a small increase in the assessor's budget because of the negotiated contract. It was a little over, a bit over, a little over $2,000. There is, um, we did do a lot of the rearranging of the fuel. Remember, we decided that we were going to take vehicle fuel out of all the individual budgets, which by the way, the, the department heads were very happy about police and the inspector. And we're going to keep it all under, under, DPW, 
that's a zero impact on the budget though because we've just moved where the where it's accounted for but you will see in your sheet if you go through and say that's the, no the number that is in that department's budget that if that that might account for it that something that it meant reductions in several of the budget and then an increase in the dpw budget but um as i said zero bottom line difference um we okay, would like okay, to okay. i just have a question on that so mm -hmm. Is that just for budgeting purposes or because because what how does because here's my question my question is that that fuel charge doesn't sit on a department's budget then mm -hmm. how is that department accountable for that usage there it is still tracked um so we're talking about the fuel that the uh that they all go to dpw to fuel up anyways so then what happens is there's a single, then they replace the fuel and they get a bill for that. So there's a single large bill for filling the tank down at DPW. And then DPW goes through. Now we, we discussed efficiencies a couple of times here. So this is all, sort of all the spirit of efficiencies. Then the DPW takes that and divvies it up between the departments of who used how much, because they know how much everyone used. And then DBW sends a bill or at least the amount to each of those department heads who then receives that money and writes down their account number and has to approve it and sends it back to have the, the, have the bill that's already been paid because DBW is responsible for paying it. The accountant then takes all of those individual authorizations, reduces the DPW budget and increases the other budgets by the amount that are being reallocated. We're all one town. This is a, this is a lot of uh, seems a lot of extra busy work. If the point of it is, is to know who's spending how much, we can get that anytime from DPW. They have records of it. It's just it's going to save a lot of shifting the paper all around town and getting authorizations. And someone like the police chief has got a lot better things to do, to do and he was very happy to get that relieved from his responsibilities is uh, just have this happen because this was happening every month, every fill up or every one, um, one to two months. So um, these are the kinds of uh, thing, you know, these are just habits that we've had over time that don't seem to make sense anymore. Um, but I don't think it'll do anything. It won't have any negative input, uh, impact on the accountability chartable because all of the information is there at all times. And um, who reviews it? Who would use it? Who would, who would, who would review it? Meaning it, it would only be... Mm -hmm. It would only be noticeable if there was something wrong. How, how would somebody notice? I, I, and again, I'm just trying to yeah. understand from, from a kind of a checks and balances mm -hmm. point of view. Like if, if everything is going from DPW and then all of a sudden DPW's yeah. fuel goes up by 10% one year, then there needs to be some internal accounting provided to say, it was because of X, Y, and, you know, because right. of these, these two departments, all of us, but is there an ongoing review of, of, of that? Right. Well, I, I, I think I feel the same way about this as I do about the utilities that we just, that we just went through too, when you have them all in one spot, if you know how, um, what the cost of these are and suddenly they go up, you see it actually more noticeably if you have that expense in one place. You would it would be much more subtle uh, across uh, across eight different departments. So if you see this auto fuel uh, go up by thirty percent one year, you go, oh well, the price went up by thirty percent. That makes sense. But if you say, wait a minute, price only went up by five percent. What is this additional increase? DPW, what's the additional increase? So you're asking who the person is that would be responsible? Well, I think it would get caught at budget time when DPW comes and says we want to increase this line by. Uh, or, or they come in March and say, we're out of money. We need to do something about that. I think it would become obvious um, to Carolyn, to me, and if they had to go for a reserve fund transfer to you. So I don't think it means that anything um, would be but at the all. Flip, the flip side of that could be that one department shows has incorporated better efficiencies and has started to use less electricity or fuel, while another one has become less efficient. And you're, because of because everything kind of averages out, you, you're not going to notice those 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 changes. Like uh, like like Amy was talking about, the library goes and uh, puts in solar, or the senior center does some type of 
you know, better efficiency heating system or whatever, but then the heating number is, you know, on their end, it should go down. But if somebody else's is being less efficient, you're not going to be able to catch, catch that because you're going to, because it's going to eat the, the, the sum of them is going to be either the same and you're going to think everybody, everything is there. But the reality is, is that there could have been further savings we could have been experiencing if we didn't notice that. Shardul, can I just, I'm sorry, Carolyn, did you want to go ahead? Well, I, no, I mean, because you might have a better perspective on how it's tracked. I, I want to just um, remind us that it's DPW, fire and police. So when it comes to efficiency, it's demand. So it's it's not something that's going to be, hey, you know, you, you got to respond differently or there's no, no consolidating with how they use that. Um, I, I would say that the only thing maybe when they're going to on um, to trainings and things like that, but it's, those are the th your three major departments. Um, building inspector uses it again, going to calls. So I'm not, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to, to say you've got to be more efficient in the, in those departments with gas use. Now, I'm, my point, my point has less to do with efficiencies more that you're not going to, by pooling it all together, you, you might miss savings potential if one department is doing a better job or, or what or something changes within the within there. That's just, uh, I, I always like detail rather than more detail is better than less detail. That's just the way I am. But I understand the bureaucracy doesn't make a lot of sense that, that which I totally uh, don't disagree with uh, from, from that standpoint, but that's just, Sorry, <laughs> go ahead. No, I'm sorry, Shadul. I thought you were done. I'm so sorry. Um, I was just going to say there is the detail being done. The details mm -hmm. being done by me with the electricity. So I know that the day, the month after we all agreed not to increase the electric bills, all of the electric bills in that I received went up by almost 7%. So it was just this giant thing. And I was like, and I came to Carolyn um, and Linda, and was like, really, this is not looking good. But then the next week they went, or the next month they went right back down. And I, I'm the one that sees that I see their usage. I'm tracking those things. So the detail is being caught and the DPW has staff that is doing the exact same thing. So we're, we are catching those and we are seeing those. And, um, and I think that, it, it, it is happening. I don't want you to think because we make one budget line um, that nobody's observing or tracking those. Nobody's doing the minute details because we are and we're in there and we're watching. And yeah. so it just, just because for a quick accounting purpose of I don't have to write 12 different numbers every single time, that's what we're talking about. Not, not, not paying attention as much to a budget line. I yeah. promise. <laughs> So in the case of fuel, just to go back to our our, our um, uh, state uh, agreement for doing details on Route 9, um, and that reimbursement would come back through the police department and wind up back to DPW for the uh, additional fuel used. And, and I, I'm not, I guess, not familiar with how it was no. negotiated with the state, if there's a, just a, a flat rate that, in, that includes additional fuel or fuels yeah. alignment. It's, we don't we don't build uh, it's not fuel there is a use of car fee which goes to the general budget so no it doesn't go back to dpw okay we allocate all the money that they need to spend and then the money comes back into general funds but it, but it's not called fuel <laughs> it's, it's but it's called. in that it's in that charge we're we're accounting for the fuel cost it's administrative yeah. overhead fee yeah. for, and then a special fee for use of the vehicle Let's see. Oh, so the only other uh, one that I wanted to mention is that you'll see that, uh, uh, that I haven't incorporated yet. The telephone line is an easy one. Whatever adjustments Jennifer's going to make on there, at least that's all in the 190s. But the other adjustment that she was talking about with copiers, uh, those things are still in individual budgets. For example, I budget for two to three uh, toners a year in my budget. So there will be... Um, some of that will be deleted, but I, this is something I have, 
I have to, I thought I had to go by just department by department, but Jennifer's already got this information. She says I already gathered it from everyone. So, so that means it's just a matter of going through and doing slight reductions throughout the budgets. So um, we're going to have a net reduction of $5,000, even though the 190s will go up by 5,000. Individual budgets will go down by nine. Is that right, Jennifer? Nine to 10. So anyways, there'll be a little bit of a savings there. So I'm going to work on that adjustment over uh, in the next week or so. That's right, Linda, you're on. <laughs> okay. So that, I, I, I hope I've covered everything that came up as a little, maybe a, a, a change in, uh, in discussing things with departments from when the uh, book was originally published, published, <laughs> I wish, in uh, February, printed there in uh, February. So I think I've adjusted for most of that, and they're not all showing. Oh, no, there is one more that I wanted to mention, uh, the biggest one. Um, we spent uh, a bit of time last week discussing uh, what was going to be an article on town meeting for sick leave for an individual officer. And um, that's that's something that we all, we ended up being kind of pretty uncomfortable with and, and maybe think, thought that maybe we didn't have the right information. So we did have a meeting during the week ab about that specifically. And um, what we have, um, our, our, our bottom line, and I think this is the way we want to resolve it at this point is to put one quarter of that money 20,000 of it uh, into the police budget and have it paid directly out of the police operational budget. There will not be an article. There, we're not going to put that $80,000 article on town meeting floor. We're going to leave it like this and we're going to see what happens as of the fall town meeting. So the, there's two ways that we came about this $20,000. One is that it does kind of take us to town meeting. And also it's a very solid projection of how much is going, we're obligated to pay based on the amount of um, leave that the officer has accrued leave using sick time, personal time, vacation time, and then donated time from others. So now it may work out that there is additional uh, additional hours donated, and that's why I'm saying we'll take that up in the fall because those hours have not yet been accumulated and the town is not obligated to pay them at this time. So we think that's a good sort of place to settle out. And, um, and is that going to be another hit on the budget? Yes, we're going to take that article. That article is not going to be on for 80000 out of free cash, however. It's going to have to go into the budget, and we need to find another way around that um, when you're balancing your bottom line. And that's, that's is, it. Is that going to be a specific line item in the police budget? No. Is that something that we... Salaries. Salaries. No. Because it is salaries, because he's... Uh, because he has a, a, a right to be on salary still through that time. Okay, I, I just wanna make sure that we don't forget about it. And then next year's budget, we are increase the baseline from that yeah. 20,000 extra, that's all, so, okay. Which is why we're going about it in the first time, but it ended up kind of getting, I guess, to be too confusing. <laughs> so yeah, we will have to track it. We'll have to, re we'll have to keep this in mind. Talk about changes. Did you change anything in the revenues? We have not made any official changes in the revenues. No, we have. We see things that are. Uh, we see possibilities for increases. We see other things, possibilities for decreases. We have not at this time made any official change in the in the revenues, but felt comfortable just going forward with the figure that we had and uh, and. Hope and expect that other things will net out. Even though the cherry sheet came back because because Annie feels so confident, you think you should leave Especially everything. the cherry sheet. Yeah, especially that one. We're not okay. concerned about that drop. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, do we have any areas we want to talk about? I know we had questions about DPW. Uh, I don't know if we want to talk about them tonight. Maybe what, if, if Scott 
was here for that um, for that conversation. But were there any other departments that we had major questions about from the finance committee? Anything that we kind of wanted to hash out? All right. Maybe? So I do. Um, one of the things that because we're now getting down to the bottom, you know, we're actually trying to we've listened to all uh, all the groups and we're ready to 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 make our recommendations and different things like that. Um, one of the things, as far as I know, we're still about $875,000 using free cash. Um, it does, that number does worry me because a uh, typical year, we've always usually done 500,000 or less or something like that. Yes, we have the free cash right now, but to move, to have our operating budget need so much in free cash, that's gonna, every year we're going to, that budget is higher and it's going to increase and increase and increase. So, um, because budgets do, right? So, in, in um, to have that such a high number. So, I am kind of nervous about that 875. I would like to see that number decrease about 200,000. I would like to see that it would be better if we could start with balancing the budget at you only using the 675. And I'm not talking about going into stabilization. I'm talking about, is there some things I'm thinking just off the top of my head, a few items that we can start for discussion. OPEB, um, maybe we can discuss, um, you know, throwing it out there, maybe the um, like in case of, I think we talked about in case of things such as Let's throw Linda's budget out there. Maybe we can move five thousand. Sorry, Linda, move five thousand dollars. And 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 in case of, we have the um, we have the reserve. Maybe I've heard you know sometimes the select board and they have used some in case of. Well, in case of, maybe we can use the finance reserve for the in case ofs. Um, so I'm thinking maybe we can. There might be some room for adjustment in a few of those spots. Um, and and also. You know, um, I don't know, maybe there's some spot, some room in um, our um, safety um, complex, you know, the, the between all those departments. So I just, I think there's some things up for discussion, but sometimes, you know, maybe we, it might be something that, you know, if we do have this up for discussion, maybe it is something that, you know, I know that they've been looking at, maybe Linda, and, and the group can go back and, and, and see what they can do and give us another recommendation on, on what they think that would be the best to bring it down a little bit. That's just some thoughts, just so that we're not going after like a department or something. Maybe there's something from different other areas. And maybe there's something we can put off into the fall too, because when we do have some better numbers. So those are just a few thoughts I had. Linda, do you have, uh, I, I know you had a, a spreadsheet when we were talking about capital, but do you have the spreadsheet with the historical uh, free cash utilization for the last couple of years and kind of? Yeah. If, um, uh, I, I just, on, in, the, one, in the, somewhere in the budget book. So why don't let go ahead, Shardul, and let me find what page this is in the budget book. It isn't significant portion of the in, increase the addition of the ambulance, or is that or is that not? No, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, it's it's not in the uh, the ambulance is not actually in the general fund budget. It's in your book to show what the budget is, but it's going to be funded by article. Okay. Some special rep. Yeah. Okay. So in that's case. not okay. So it's in the book, but it's not part in the of the book that. to show when we have the revenues for it. We'll come back into the budget, but no, we weren't going to use $1.2 million in free cash to balance it. It's going to be bad enough. But also we don't think that free cash is going to be needed continually. So this is just a, um, what do you call it? A, a, some, that, that start, a, a startup that has to be funded from free cash and then it gets going and it's funded from its special revenues after that. Well, the startup cost is a separate item, not part of the budget. Correct, because it won't be continuing as part uh, to be paid out of general funds, which is the free, which is our, our okay. cash. So, um, so it's going to be given that initial uh, in, in injection from of free cash through the article. It, we kind of have to take it one step at a time. If if we if we have enough special revenue, 
from the ambulance services to cover the budget. We pull, we will pull it back into the budget. We will put it in as the ambulance fund budget and maybe it will be four or $500,000. But in the revenue side, we're going to have, be able to show special, the revenue of four or $500,000 supporting it. So it will not go, it will not cause an increase in free cash being used to the balance the budget in those future years. But in this year it would. So, which is why we separated it out so that we get you know, we don't get any bad habits going here. The, um, not to get too far off of free cash, but I, I know we had talked about the possibility of, I guess, paying back the seed money for the ambulance if the special revenue fund mm -hmm. enough revenue. Is that doable? I know we weren't 100% positive at the time, but is that something that could get that I, As far as I know, it is something that we can do that we, we uh, I call it running a tap or that we're we're doing an advance and then we can hopefully get it back. Uh, there are, uh, I'm being told not to count on it too quickly, but I'm, I'm not sure about that. We really don't know until we get going. Okay. So, okay, free cash used to balance the budget going back to, well, is on your page 23, balancing the, the, General fund budgets. I can pull it up on the screen uh, if I can share the right. Eh. Hmm. Right. Are you seeing the budget book? No, not are you? Yes. Try again. We're on thirty-three, though. Oh, oh, it is there. Darn, I just it was there. Right. Yeah. Uh, I thought I didn't have it. Okay, now I'll hit share. Okay, so I want to be on page twenty-three. At the bottom. Right. Where am I? One more floor. There we are. There you okay. are. You're there. All right. So free cash to balance the budget is on the second line. Uh, you might want to think in terms of combining stabilization and free cash, which is the way we were up to for 2021. And then, uh, see, free cash is just the one line, but if you think in terms of the gap that we needed to, the gap we had after applying revenues, the, the gap has been met by the top three lines. Going back to, this only goes back to 20, but it was ongoing in that, uh, 19, I think was used even, used more free cash. But um, so we used 306,000 in stabilization in 20 to balance the budget. We used 530,000 in stabilization, which has been paid back and 752,000 in free cash to balance the budget in 21. So between, um, fortunately, we recovered quickly enough to get all that money was paid back to stabilization. Actually, about 700,000 was paid back. For 22, we used 463,000, a lot less in free cash. However, that's because we were using, look at the next line, we were using ARPA money because ARPA, was um, re directly being applied as revenue replacement because of the money that we had directly because of the funds that we lost with the due to, to uh, the meals and rooms taxes. Again, in 23, we uh, did the same kind of breakdown. We used less in, in stabilization. Uh, I mean, less from ARPA and 474,000 in free cash. Now we can't use ARPA anymore. So if you're looking at the total that we've used, that was, to, to bridge this gap, we have we've gone from 1.2 million next year, a uh, little bit, a little bit, uh, quick, uh, close, uh, under a million, and then we're at 875,000 for 23. 
which is that what I was trying to duplicate them for 24. Okay, so, so it's the same it's gap that we're trying to fill, but we're, yeah. this time we have to do it ourselves. Not free so the spike is just due to the drop off in ARPA basically this year. That's, that's right. We had actually, we're actually projecting the same gap or we're, we're trying to bridge that same gap. So we did not look for an increase. Um, it has not expanded. In, in fact, it both came down from what we used in 22, okay. which was down from 21. So, I mean, although Amy says, what Amy says is correct, that budgets just go up each year. Um, we've seen our revenues go up each year too. I mean, we're really... <laughs> I, the thing is, it's hard because when you're looking at 20, 21, 22, you know, when you're looking at especially 21 and some of this with the ARPA money, it kind of mm -hmm. is is thrown it, it, it off. The other thing is things were thrown it off is. because where we were with the pandemic, you know, but before this, before the pandemic, we were about, I remember before Carolyn, it was like five, it was a, every year, it was about 500 that we were hoping for. Um, we're hoping for that in free cash, but we yeah. are hoping to spend less than it. If I right. back up one more page, go up to uh, 22. This is, these are, this is how the gap that I'm talking about filling. The revenues are on the top line and then the expense of the, of the budget that was, voted for that year. And then the shortfall is the third line. And then the shortfall is that what we were just looking at is how we were with the various ways that we were filling it. So um, there, that's got our totals. So we went from, we were really close that FY20, that's when COVID hit us. We, Amy, you're right before the year before that, I think it was five something. I just don't have it here anymore because it's dropped off, it's dropped off on the left. Um, but I, but uh, David Nixon had actively been working to narrow the gap each year in what was being used for free cash. So um, we used 300,000 to keep that. And then the goal was to decrease it even more so the next year, but then we got hit by COVID and boom, uh, all bets were off. But th the goal is to get there again. And I'm, I'm, uh, you know, we are so where I came up with the 200. So especially if you look, you have 1200 um, needing mm -hmm. less than revenue, you know, and you needed 1221, you need mm -hmm. in 22, it's down about 200. And mm -hmm. then in 23, it's down about 200. Now we're going back up, we need to go down about 200. It, it just needs to keep going the other way. I feel like and I don't disagree with you. I think the decision that we made when we were discussing it at our meetings in town hall was that that's a good plan for starting next year, that we were still recovering. So yeah. Amy, Amy, just a reminder too, we also, um, and for all the right reasons at that time, we did not raise the tax rate. So yeah. that, that, that would have had an impact on this year. And we're we're back to where we would be if we hadn't done that, but we're not. We still haven't recovered the cash from those years, and um, and we are still ahead of the game because remember the three hundred thousand that we used in that first year that I referred to to balance this in twenty. That was based on anticipated free cash, and right now we're dealing with already starting last year. We were dealing with already certified free cash. But having said that, Amy, I mean, I know that we've had discussions outside um, the meeting about whether we just go ahead kick some more of the expenses off, particularly I know we talked about OPEB um, and um, you're not alone in that opinion. Um, and there may be some support on select board even, um, rather than say cut the budget by 200,000, take something like OPEB or whatever else we can find as this maybes, or is that what we call them, what ifs, um, and say, let, how about we, why don't we look at a gap, this again for the fall town meeting and make sure everything is still on track at that time rather than budget it all right now. That That's an alternative that I'll just throw out to you um, as well. Yeah, I, I, I kind of like that idea. Um, I see where Amy's coming from. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't know if maybe 200 isn't doable, but I, I don't know, maybe if in your discussions over the next week in town hall, if you can 
sharpen the pencil a little bit on that at least that'd be good just to show just to at least make an effort to keep going in the right direction with it i think that'd go a long way for people to see well well the my only comment to, to some of this stuff the you know, increases is that when you, we go and look at the macro environment of the country and you, you look at how everything has gone up at least 20 percent or more since 2020 and our budget is only going up less than you know it's, it's only about 15 percent or something like that compared to 2020 in terms of inflation rates rates fuel everything else we're I, I think this is more of a conversation of everything can technically probably be exactly how it used to be but because of the n natural causes of inflation and everything else is more expensive it, I, I don't know what i'm not saying there isn't room to cut but there also needs to be some understanding that everything is more expensive now labor is more expensive co costs are more expensive it might be easy for us to say lower lower some things but it's in that then it's going to be result in reduction of services and reduction of quality of life or reduction of other things. So we, we just want to make sure that we, we understand what we're asking for before we go and just say mm -hmm. we have to we have to cut stuff. So yeah. if we if we were to take your numbers then um, if it's gone up roughly twenty percent in that same time frame, and if Amy you know was we're putting the benchmark back down at five hundred thousand. Um, then if you added 20% to that, that would make a $600,000 um, would be the new $500,000 uh, based on inflation and, and additional costs. So, you know, that would- That would also mean the revenues, meaning we haven't raised taxes or other things by 20%. You know, that, that we, we have to go in account. It has to be both sides. It has to be expenses and the revenue. So the incoming ha hasn't gone up. Maybe what we have an issue is not a expense issue, but a revenue issue, in the so, sense that we're we're not bringing in enough. Yeah, our, our, at, the back same, up. at the same time, I mean, look at house values. Look at the tax uh, bills that people have been getting for house values for the last couple of years, and they they're continuing to rise. So I mean, revenues are going up. Maybe not twenty percent, but uh, you know, I, I, I don't. Well, according to according to these numbers, it's seventeen, roughly seventeen percent, right? Um, since uh, twenty to uh, the the projected seventeen five by twenty five, and and that's not counting the. It was a drop in the second year, Andy. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, that's this. So we're not starting. I mean, if you started from the uh, from twenty one, the increase is even greater. But if you're going to twenty, twenty was based on uh, we didn't get hit with the revenues immediately. Um, we were still gathering revenues, you know, the tax, everything that uh, was projected. We didn't really get hit until uh, later on in 20. We were all sent home in March and then nobody knew really where we were going, but the, the hits started happening over the summer. And, and I'm just saying, to Shardul's point about balance, there seems to be a 17% increase, in, at least if we're still using those two inputs. But you're right, Linda, they, you know, if you're taking 20 out of it and looking at 20, um, 21, the, the, the time period of which saw that increase is obviously, uh, you know, a year less. So it's, it's more dramatic. And, and if you look at, if you normalize the difference, meaning in relative to the revenues and the expenses, as a percentage of those two, the difference is actually decreased. The increase, that, that shortfall, <laughs> the, the number has gone up, but in terms of the revenues and the expenses, the rev that it actually has, is a lower percentage of the of, of both of those. So it's it it's going to be some time where we're, we're going to go through a transition period. Where we're going through this uh, fairly extreme, you know, event to 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 our area. But we also have to realize that it, it, that if things have gone up, where where have things gone up in in terms of our revenues? In terms of is it purely Real estate taxes? Is it is it occupancy taxes? Has as everything else in terms of our revenues mm -hmm. followed through with with how things have increased with our budget? So um, I just just making point that it's not it's not so easy to to cut budgets these days just because 
there are certain expenses that are just they are constant. It's just it's you can you you can use exactly the same amount of what fuel, but the the, the if the fuel went from you know dollar fifty a gallon to three dollars and fifty a gallon, there's uh, how do you use the you can use the same amount of fuel, but the cost it, it has gone up significantly. So, and, and I just ask ask a question is. I know you've said you've made some adjustments to the book. Uh, can we get an adjustment to the balancing here with the free cash with those adjustments that you described? Because we're looking at a book that doesn't include those things. I, I'm not following. What are you well, asking you, for? Because this is the book. But what are you asking for? This is the book, but this is the the book that you're using is not does not include some of the adjustments that you said you were making. That to, are, oh, to the um, right. To the budget, some the of budget. it. Yes, yeah, it does. It does not. Yes. Right. So um, that means yes. that this number that we're looking at may be off by I don't know twenty, thirty, forty thousand additional. Uh, let's see. Maybe, or maybe we just you know remember we moved the reserve from your reserve from 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 a hundred to one hundred and thirty. Oh, I was right. actually thinking we might just offset it there because it looks like the net increase is really. Oh, it, uh, two offsetting about twenty, a little over twenty thousand, and I think we okay. put thirty thirty thousand in there. So right. I, th I was thinking I'd just take oh, it away from you guys. <laughs> well, that's okay. I mean, that's an emergency yeah. fund anyway, and we haven't completely used it in the past. But yeah. it was to anticipate, I believe, some of the inflationary costs that we might be facing this year. Correct. Yeah. Was the reason for the increase? Yes. I mean, well, you initially go, it was supposed go, to. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you go to okay. four, page forty nine and you go to the OPEB. Which has been our traditional safety valve. Mm -hmm. We're one of the few towns that actually puts money towards it, or has been mm -hmm. for some time. Um, and we're trying to get back up to funding it better. Um, you know, we went twenty one, we dropped a sixteen, almost seventeen thousand dollars. Then we went to sixty six eight, so sixty seven thousand. Then mm -hmm. twenty three, we voted one seventy to try and get back on track. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so far there's no actual though. You, you do that at the end of the year, I guess, or it's it's it hasn't actually been expended yet, right? Um, I put well, as of the first half of the year, anyway. I put uh, oh no, I didn't. Yeah, I do it in the second. I have if there's eighty in so right. far. We're right. Yeah. Right. So we're, we're about use, halfway. We're going to yeah. use that one seventy. Okay, and this yeah. year you're saying two twenty. So mm -hmm. even if we were to cut it back to last year, it's still a drop in the bucket to, you know, um, uh, you know, to the the shortfall. Okay. It would have an impact, but not a great impact. I mean, because um, I don't think we should be going below the 170 if we can avoid it. I think we, it helps us with our credit rating. Correct? It does. It does. The thing is, un unless you were to see it as um, not a cut, but a postponement of the expense right. to the fall town meeting, okay. in which case, right, I mean, right, uh, and, and that I think that's a great solution. Okay. Because we may have higher revenues this summer than we anticipated through the occupancy and restaurant taxes and so on and so forth. We also have a couple of uh, pot dispensaries that are operating now. Yes, I don't think we can expect a lot more than okay. we're getting on that one because we're losing okay. some. We'll be losing some in the community host part. But yes, we uh, okay. we've been doing okay there. All right. Um, so. Uh, DPW, free cash, any other sticking points in the budget that we want to discuss at a future meeting? Mm. No, but I, I just want to say one thing. I, I keep hearing about putting solar on one building or another, and I just wondered if the town should look at more of a uh, an array somewhere that would do all the buildings. Would it be more efficient than poking holes in, in the roof of one building for one building's solar. Just something to think about down the road. We've got some great useless land out on uh, Cemetery Road, the dump road out in that area. So there's plenty yeah. of space that it could be done, Paul. Right, so. and, and, then, and then we feed all those buildings, okay? Nice. Because that, that's the way it works now. I mean, you, you create so much power, and if you use excess power, you have to assign it to a, I don't know if they have special rules for municipalities, but if you're a, you know, uh, if, you know, I looked into doing it for my buildings. It's just with my age, it doesn't make sense. 
because of payback time. But, you know, I think it's, sorry, my clocks are going off. But it is it is something I think the town should look at. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to echo that too, particularly since you uh, showed, I, I, I believe it was the new senior center electrical budget mm. was, pretty, was relatively substantial. That's the new uh, library. It, it, oh, it was a library, thank you. And the, uh, as, as Paul said, and, and David said, we have some land out there. Uh, it wouldn't be the first town to put solar on top of a, a capped landfill. Yep. Can I give you some updates on solar? Sure. So uh, the library, uh, we will hopefully be going out to bid. I'm sorry, not for the library, for the senior center. We anticipate going out to bid after uh, we have a couple projects that we're working on that have to go out to bid, but that should be going out in the next few months. Uh, the library, they're still having some issues with the roof. So we're not really, that's going to be, it's unknown when that's going to happen. Um, and if David remembers, we were talking right when I first started, there is some interest on what you're talking about, but um I'm going to nudge the entity that I was that we were talking with to see where we at we are where we are at. So I just can't give that much too much details because it's not nothing that's set in stone. But there is some interest in that area to do just what you're saying. Sounds good. All right. Anything else for tonight? No. Um, no, I, I can make a motion. Yeah, I, I want some clear directions. So, yeah. so, okay, that, but that there's one other thing that I want to say is some of these new expenditures, we're really are done with an eye towards bringing in more, more revenue. We don't know exactly how much, and those revenues aren't reflected in our projected revenues. Um, there was an addition to uh, inspectors um, in both Board of Health and in the regular inspection. So we will be getting more inspection money in and the land use coordinator hopefully will save us ex expenses. I don't know how much um, and that won't bring, necessarily bring in money. However, we it has been a leaky area for us as far as, um, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, that's enough. Um, but it's it, we're trying to patch areas that uh, would, um, where we uh, may have expenses that are not in the budget. So um, hopefully by the time we have a second look, so I guess what I'm looking for, David, is are you, are you all looking for cuts or are you looking for postponements with a second look? Because mm -hmm. they're really different as to where the money will come from. It, it seems based on what you just said that, um, you know, uncaptured revenue for for the future that may be from inspections and things like that, that mm -hmm. maybe delaying OPEB would be the solution because if we're going to increase revenues from inspections and fees and things like that, that the select board has voted on and even, you know, water and sewer bills, mm -hmm. um, th things like that, then maybe we do put off OPEB to a degree, uh, maybe not the 200,000, maybe it is two. I don't know, but uh, maybe we reassess in the fall. And then it, hopefully those revenues do show an increase based on the new new positions and the new duties people are assuming. I also want to mention, um, just to throw out there that if the, on the warrant, if the Russell School ends up getting passed for whatever reason, um, and they do the um, put the money into the Russell School. My understanding is we'll probably need to increase line item for insurance purposes, and there will be other costs to that, um, which is something we need to just think about because then that'll be a. And I'm not sure the dollar amount. Maybe Sue could tell us or um, Linda. You know, so we can think keep that in mind. We might need that out of reserves. So if we're going to insure uh, the Russell School for property after they put this amount of money into it, um, it's still a vacant building. It will still only be insured for one peril, fire. Uh, demolition will only be covered up to $100,000 and they're probably gonna charge, excess surplus company is probably gonna charge us $20,000 a year to do it. 
Um, three years ago, it was seventeen thousand uh, dollars. It's it's not worth it. You become insurance poor doing this stuff. But in my opinion, yeah, that's why we dropped the insurance on it a couple of years back because it was crazy what we were spending. Absolutely, David. Okay. Um, anything else before Paul's on, in the spotlight here? Are you updated on the new schedule? You all got that, yes. Yes. Okay. Okay, I'll make a motion, we adjourn. My second. All right, uh, let me do a roll call just because everyone's here that we were at sure duel. Yes. Uh, Paul. Yes. Andy. I saw a yes. I saw his mouth move. Um, Amy? Yes. And myself, yes.